you know, the other day in my dad's class out at the prison, we were talking about whether you should tell your kids the truth. And I said, there are things that you should not tell your kids. They can't handle them. They don't understand them. Uh, but you shouldn't lie. You should say, no, we're not going to discuss this or let's talk about this or whatever. We know that we shouldn't share everything with everybody. And so holding back can be a very good thing. It says that words are like sheep. Uh, the more there are, the better the chances are that something will go astray. You know, that's why preachers shouldn't go so long. Um, but he says that, um, where's the horses? Uh, that, you know, if you've got a lot of them, we need to have, uh, some of them will do bad things. It talks about good words being like choice silver and even better than that. But it says the lack of judgment is the lack of, of having heart. It's the lack of being able to make good choices that we have seen here in the book of Proverbs uh, several times. The second line of that verse highlights the negative consequences that fall on the back of the fool. It says, foolish people make foolish decisions and there are negative consequences. But it says that the righteous person will be nourished. It's like a picture of a shepherd who takes the sheep out into the green pastures and leads them beside the still waters. But a fool will not heed that and will not listen. The section ends with a pair of Proverbs that stress the value of right speech, of wise speech. The Proverbs of the section describe the contrasting outcomes in terms of outcomes in this life. You know, it's not saying that you will have bad outcomes when it comes to heaven. It's saying that, that wise living, wise speech will have good outcomes in this life. It's uh, supporting the idea that what goes around comes around rather than the idea that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Now, in the next verses, in the next paragraph after this, we see what God does. But in this particular chapter, it's just describing the natural consequences of stupidity, of foolishness, of not doing it what God has to say. Let's take a look at a couple things that we can apply uh, from these verses. One is about diligence. What is a wise son? Is it a person who just gets a good t-shirt? Uh, or is there something more to that? A wise son pursues righteousness. A wise son pursues uh, godliness instead of uh, craving and instead of sleep. A wise son uh, works at his life. These two people uh, were father and daughter Olympians over in London. Uh, they were bringing, I thought, great honor to their family. You know, every once in a while you'd see uh, a child competing and the parents are just beaming with pride. Well, here we have a father and daughter. They were competing in shooting sports. Uh, a father that shoots together. What? I don't know how that would go. Um, but they bring honor for the family. Now, it may be hard to appreciate this when, when we live in a world where the children do not go into the family business and, and dads don't teach their, their skills to their, their sons so that they can have a great job. Uh, we go out and, and work for a company or we go out and work for somebody else and hardly ever go into the family business. But I think the principle that is there uh, continues on into our world. And that is that, that uh, sons and daughters, that students will be needed to help take care of parents who are aging. Uh, I saved this verse for Katie so that she would be here when I was, had to say this because I want to go live with her when, when I'm old. Uh, but we are called upon. We are, we are called upon to, we may someday be called upon to help with the needs of our parents. This is something that, that continues to happen even in our day. Yeah, you didn't go into the family business, but we need to honor uh, fathers and mothers. We, live, we don't live in an honor and shame society anymore, but this is a big thing back in, in the biblical world. Uh, it has to do with righteousness, which is the opposite of the wicked, grasping and craving. Um, the, the righteous son brings honor. The grasping and craving son uh, brings dishonor to this world. In ancient times, communities were too small and too tightly knit to allow you to get away with those kinds of things. Everybody knew it. Now, in small-town America, we know that every, what everybody does. But in a lot of places in our world, you know, you can do something really stupid at work, and nobody at church knows it. You can have a terrible home life, and nobody at work knows it. You can compartmentalize your life, 
into having various people think that you're a great person and still have a horrible uh, life and, and your reputation doesn't suffer from it. Well, um, our society allows that to happen and we cannot afford to do that. Our lives need to be integrated as a Christian. Every part of your life must be honorable. Every part of your life uh, must be righteous. Whether it, you go to work in Lincoln or Omaha or Kansas City or wherever it might be, or whether you um, uh, work here in town, whether your family is in one place and, and you're in another, whether you know wherever it might be, we need to have an integrated, righteous life. The last thing we want to talk about this morning is on children growing up. Um, that picture shows a convertible with a guy in a hat couple guys in a hat and they're opening the door for the lady. Times have changed. Um, times have changed also in respect to adolescence and growing up. You know, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, when you hit the age of 12, you went to work uh, on your dad's farm. Uh, you know, everybody had to go to work. Everybody, you know, you were an adult and you just had to do a, a, a grown person's job. Well, with the, with the uh, Industrial Revolution, We've invented this idea of being a teenager, where we delay that because we don't have enough jobs. And so kids are confused, parents are confused, we're all confused. Well, the proverb of, on, Proverbs on the wise son encourage parents to help their children to make good choices. Uh, we need to continue this uh, process through modeling diligence, through modeling righteousness for our sons and our daughters. The goal is to learn wisdom. And which is the source of uh, every virtue, including diligence. And we need to follow that. We need to be models for them as they grow and as they learn to be adults. But we can be patient. We have lots of time. We can be patient with them uh, as they tr transition uh, from dependent children to being responsible adults. But we need uh, to prepare those kids to take on adult uh, responsibilities and make adult decisions. And so we need to do stuff like giving our kids an alarm clock instead of waking them up every morning. You know, they can get themselves up. Uh, we need to teach them how to do their laundry so that the day they walk into college, you know, three weeks after they walk into college, they're back home saying, Mom, do my laundry. You know, we need to teach them responsibilities. We need to give them uh, opportunities to uh, uh, be accountable to us. We shouldn't use these proverbs to club our kids. Um, we can say, you must honor, you must do this, you must uh, say this. If you can't read what it says underneath there, I love it. It says, when I'm finished pointing, let's go get ice cream. Uh, I think that's a good proverb right there. Uh, we can't use these proverbs to club our children. We have to look, be modeling, we have to have patience, we, can ha we have time to accomplish this. I read this this week. Teenagers are the most unlovable when they need the most love. Uh, that is a very true statement. It may not be in the Bible, but it's a very true statement. And that's something that we need to provide. We have the experience. We have the love. We have uh, the ability to love people, to love our children when they are going through tough times and when they may not be lovable. And so we need to, to take that to heart. We have to encourage industry, and we have to discourage sloth by either challenging them to do great things or to, to uh, stop enabling our children by letting them sleep and letting them play Nintendo until 3 in the morning. One way to imply the emphasis on joy and, and honor that we see in these verses is to tell our kids that we're proud of them. Uh, we need to remind them that they are doing great stuff. And any time they do something good, we need to remind them that we are very proud of them. Uh, and so we need to remind ourselves of that. I'd like to conclude by um, talking about a professor who was, who was going to go speaking at a, another in, uh, university. And he was asked to send his resume so that they could show what kind of degrees he had and, and what kind of books he had published and, and all the honors he had received in his life. Instead, he sent them a list of all of his students, all of his students who had followed after him into the field that he had chosen. 
And he said, everything important 